Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Temperature in Chemistry. This is part one. So uh, I say temperature in chemistry, but really everything in this lesson applies to really any science, chemistry, physics, biology. We're going to talk about temperature scales. So we need to talk about the, the temperature scales that we use most commonly in science and chemistry and so on. That would be the Celsius temperature scale and the Kelvin temperature scale. But we're also going to talk a little bit about the Fahrenheit temperature scale. Even though we don't use it very much, you still need to know how to deal with it. So let's draw a couple of pictures. I really think pictures are going to make it very, very easy to understand. Before we do that, just think uh, about what Celsius is. We know that zero degrees Celsius is when water freezes, right? And 100 degrees Celsius is when water boils. Right? Now, the only other thing I really want to put down here is that we, we have very good familiarity with Celsius because the zero point is when water freezes, the 100 point is when water boils. So we have some familiarity with this. But let's talk about the, zero, the, uh, the Kelvin temperature scale. Zero degrees Kelvin. Now, I already made a mistake right there. We don't usually say zero degrees Kelvin. We don't put a degree marking there. It's just by convention. We put the degree marking for Celsius and Fahrenheit, but when we talk about Kelvin, we just don't put the little degree mark. So even though I said degrees Kelvin, really, you don't really say the word degree usually. And at uh, zero Kelvin, the way you would say it is zero Kelvin, atomic, thermal, motion, stops. Now I'm going to put stops in quotation mark. So zero Kelvin is the theoretical temperature where, you know, the temperature of an object is really just a measurement of how much energy or how fast all the atoms are bouncing off each other and moving. When you cool water down and it begins to freeze, the atoms or the molecules of water are moving slower and slower and slower. If you cool it down even further, they move slower and slower and slower. And if you get down to the theoretical point of zero Kelvin, which is very far below zero in Celsius, then theoretically the water molecules don't move at all. They literally have zero vibration. And when I mean zero, I mean zero Kelvin is theoretically zero motion. Nothing moves. It doesn't even twitch. It doesn't even vibrate even a little bit. Now, the reason I put stops, thermal motion stops in quotation mark is because zero Kelvin is a theoretical temperature. We can't really ever get to zero Kelvin. Let's draw a thermometer that goes something like this. Yes, it's a hokey looking thermometer. I agree with you. And higher temperature is this way and lower temperature is this way. And we're going to draw a Celsius thermometer. So somewhere up here is what we call zero degrees Celsius. And somewhere over here is called 100 degrees Celsius. So here is where water is going to freeze or begin to melt if you're warming it up. And when you continue uh, heating it up, it's going to get to 100 Celsius. It's going to start to boil. So that's the Celsius temperature scale. Notice that when you cool something down to zero, you can get it below zero, no problem, because it's just going to get colder and colder and colder and colder. Now, eventually, because we know temperature is just the motion of atoms, if you keep making it colder, theoretically, then the atoms stop. Now, we already just told you they really can't stop, but they're going to get closer and closer to stopping. So there is some limit to the coldest temperature you can get. And so what is that? We have a new temperature scale to really talk about that. So let me draw this thermometer again, right underneath, like this. This is going to be the Kelvin temperature scale. And the uh, way down here, is going to be zero Kelvin. Notice we don't put any degree symbol there, and it should be a capital K so instead of a lowercase k, so I'll try to do it like that. Zero Kelvin. This is the temperature that if you were to cool this ice cube or whatever it is, colder and colder and colder, it would theoretically stop. All the motion of the atoms would cease. They wouldn't even vibrate anymore. They would just literally be still. All right? And so if this is zero Kelvin and this is zero Celsius, then right here, this marking is 273 0.15 Kelvin, and this marking right here is 373.15 Kelvin. The nice thing about the way the Kelvin scale is set up is, notice that there's 100 tick marks between 0 Celsius and 100 Celsius. How do you know? Because 100 minus 0 is 100. But notice if we take these numbers, 273.15 minus, I'm sorry, 373.15 minus 273.15, even though there's a decimal, when we subtract, we still get 100, degree, 100 tick marks. So there's 100 tick marks. And there's 100 tick marks here. And because we know there's 100 degrees 
between freezing and boiling in both scales, we know the size of the degrees are the same in Kelvin and Celsius. That's important. The size of the degrees. When you increment by one degree Celsius and you increment by one degree Kelvin, you're going up the same amount because it's the same number of degrees in Celsius and in uh, Kelvin. And it's different in Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit's a crazy temperature scale because not only is the zero point of the freezing and the, and the boiling of water kind of some weird numbers, but also the degree sizes for the Fahrenheit scale is smaller and different than these. So it's nice that there's 100 evenly spaced tick marks in both scales. The size of the ticks are exactly the same. All right. And also there's no negative temperatures in the Kelvin scale. That's another nice thing. So the next thing we need to be concerned about is how do we convert back and forth between these guys? You can see from the diagram here, here that the uh, temperature in Kelvin is equal to whatever the temperature is in Celsius plus 273.15. There's your conversion factor, but it's, it's different than regular conversion factors. You don't multiply or divide in order to convert temperatures. You just simply add a number. So notice that at zero Celsius, if I put zero in here for zero Celsius and I add 273.15, then I get the correct answer in Kelvin. If I put 100 degrees Celsius in here and add it, then I get the same correct uh, answer that I wrote down here on the temperature scale. I want to talk a little bit about the Fahrenheit scale. All right. The first thing I want you to remember or know is the Fahrenheit scale, the degree tick marks between the freezing point and the boiling point of water, the, the tick mark sizes in the degree in the Fahrenheit scale is smaller and very different than Celsius. And it leads to it being kind of an, a, a kind of like not very nice to work with. Right. And the way you can understand this is because you know that in the, in the Fahrenheit scale, 32 degrees Fahrenheit is when H2O freezes. Right. And you also know that at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, water boils. Right. And I'm going to show you how we get this in just a second. But there is an equation that can convert to, to Fahrenheit when you're given Celsius. Fahrenheit is going to be equal to the fraction 9 fifths multiplied by however many degrees you are in Celsius, and then you have to add 32. I'm going to talk about how this works in just a second, but, or why it works the way, why, why it is the way it is right here. But the, all you need to really know is if you know some temperature in Celsius, you put it into this equation, you multiply by 9, divide by 5, which is the same thing as multiplying by the fraction 9 fifths. Whatever you get as an answer, you have to add 32 degrees to it, then you're going to get Fahrenheit. Now you can start to see why, why Fahrenheit is like not, a, not a great system. And the reason it's not a great system is because you have to multiply and add, and there's a weird 32 in there. It's all coming from nowhere. Whereas here, yes, you might say, well, this is a weird number, but this is a much more natural system because the zero point of the system is when thermal motion stops. The freezing point and the boiling point of water is just the numbers that they end up being in the system. We ascribe zero and 100 degrees Celsius to those numbers because we use water so much, but water, other than being on Earth, is not that important. These are just other numbers that correspond to that in, the, in that temperature scale. But the tick marks are the exact same size. There's 100 tick marks between these two points here, but there is not 100 tick marks between these two points here. All right, so for problem one, or part A, I guess you'd say, let's convert 72 point zero degrees Fahrenheit to Fahrenheit and let's go to degrees Celsius. Now right out of the gate, this one's a little trickier, right? Because let's write down the equation. We know that a uh, degree Fahrenheit is going to equal to nine fifths times whatever the degree Celsius is and we add 32. So normally you put stuff on this side and you calculate the Fahrenheit, but we're actually given this. So what we do is we take the 72, we put it here, 72.0, because that's actually the amount, the Fahrenheit temperature we have. And on the right hand side, we have 9 fifths times C plus 32. How do you solve this equation? We need to solve for this. A lot of students, when we're in math class, they're like, why would I ever need to learn how to solve this equation? <clears throat> Here's a good example. I give you an equation to go from one direction to the other but I immediately make you go the, other, go the other way. And so a lot of students don't know what to do, but it's very simple. The first thing we need to do is get rid of the 32 over here. What we'll do is we'll subtract 32 from both sides. We'll have 72 and then we'll have minus 32 and that's gonna give us 9 fifths times C. Now when we take 72 minus 32, we get 40. So we have 40 is equal to 9 fifths times C. Now how do we get C by itself? Well, just like we can add or subtract both sides of an equation, anything we want, we can also multiply or divide. We want to get rid of the 9 fifths. 
How do we do that? We multiply one side by five ninths. Whoops, if I can write nine correctly. Five ninths. And we multiply this side also by five ninths. And why are we doing it that way? Because, because the five on the bottom and the tops cancel and the nine on the bottom and the tops also cancel. So what you're gonna be left with is five times 40 divided by nine. And when you uh, take five times 40 and you divide by nine, you're gonna get 22.2 is equal to C. And so we flip it around, you say C is equal to 22.2 degrees uh, Celsius because we're going into the Celsius scale. And that's the answer, 22.2 degrees Celsius. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.